Welcome. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to create a SWIP trunk between Sangoma PB Exact and Cisco CUCM. <clears throat> we'll use the SIP trunk to send calls between the two call control servers um, during a hybrid setup as we're converting from either Cisco to Sangoma or from Sangoma to Cisco, whatever you're trying to do. We are actually going to be using it to go from Cisco to Sangoma. <clears throat> So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use Sangoma's Zulu, which is their soft phone jabber type setup, um, for the Sangoma portion of this test. And I'm going to use Cisco CIPC, Cisco IP Communicator, for the, same, for the Cisco portion. And uh, I'll show you now that they're both registered to Cisco and Sangoma. Um, if you see here, on the CIPC, the TFTP server I'm using is the one of my call manager. And then over here on Zulu, we'll open the configuration, and you see it's a different IP address, and this is the IP address of my Sangoma PB exact UC. <clears throat> and to see that it's not set up and see that it doesn't work, we'll call the extension of the CIPC. We'll get two rings and then it'll fail. And as you can see, my CIPC extension is not ringing at all. <clears throat> so there's the fail. And then we'll come over here and call 4000, which is the extension of my Sangoma Zulu device. Click dial. And we get a call cannot be completed as dialed. And the Sangoma phone does not ring. All right, so to set this up, we're going to go to call manager first. I like to do the call manager portion first. doesn't really matter which one you do first. This is the way we're going to do it. The first thing you'll need to do is create a new security, SIP trunk security profile. And you do that by going to system, security, SIP trunk security profiles. That'll bring you to this window. You probably have to click find to show. The easiest way to do it is to select the non-secure SIP trunk profile and then copy it, change the name, we'll select Sangoma and just leave the non-secure SIP trunk profile portion in there. The change that we need to make to this profile is in the outgoing transport type needs to be UDP. So we'll do that here and then we'll click save. And that's our new SIP trunk profile that we'll use in just a moment. <clears throat> Next thing we need to do is to go to device, trunk, and we're going to create the trunk. Go to add new, select SIP trunk, leave the auto field settings, click next, name the trunk. I'm going to name ours Sangoma PBX. We'll name it Sangoma with description to PBX. You'll need to select a device pool. I'm going to use default, but you're welcome to use whichever one you like. And then the next setting we need to check is media termination point required. That section needs to be selected and retry video call as audio. That needs to be selected. Now that one is selected by default, but just in case it's not, make sure you have it selected and then scroll down. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to go to the call routing information, inbound calls section, and we're going to select the calling search space. Now the call and search space you select here needs to have access to the partition that you're going to put your route pattern in in just a moment. That's That way calls coming through this SIP trunk can get to that route pattern. <clears throat> but it's up to you, however you want to do it. I'm going to use this one. This particular call and search space has access to all of our extensions in the company. And you also need to select redirecting diversion header delivery inbound. Then we'll move on down the list until we get to destination, SIP information, destination. And we're going to put in the IP address. The destination address is going to be the IP address of our Sangoma PB at UC. This is our IP address to that. The next portion that I'm going to change is the destination port. Now, by default, Cisco uses 5060. 
The problem with that is Sangoma by default listens to channel port 5160 for Chan SIP SIP messages. So if you have not changed the default on Sangoma to be something different, then this port here that we're sending calls to Sangoma on needs to be 5160. If you've changed that on Sangoma side, the listening port for Chan SIP messages, then you'll need to use whatever port you selected on the Sangoma side. The default is 5160, that's what we'll be using today. The next portion I'll need to do is select my SIP trunk security profile, the one we just created, Sangoma, and then select a SIP profile. I'm going to use the standard SIP profile that's built into Cisco. And that's all the options for the trunk that we need to create. We'll click Save, click Close, and in just a few moments, once we've built the trunk on Sangoma side, we'll come back and reset this SIP trunk. But for now, we're going to let it be and move on to our route pattern. And you go to call routing, route pattern, or route hunt, route pattern, and then we're going to add a new route pattern. I'm actually going to create two in this video because we're actually using this for testing in our office and I have um, a couple of different ones I have to use. So this first one is going to be for our test here on the video, which is 4000. That's the extension of my Zulu uh, client. We'll make the route partition 4000. And in this route partition, if you want to use it more for wildcards, you can use wildcards however you want to create it to get those calls for the extensions that live on Sangoma over there. But for us, we're going to select 4000 and a partition that's accessible by the call and search space that we used on our SIP trunk. Internal for us is that partition. The next thing we're going to do is select the gateway route list. We'll go down to our Sangoma trunk. And then uncheck provide outside dial tone. This call is not going to the PSTN, so we do not need to provide outside dial tone. And click save. Click close. Now, come back to call manager in a few moments and we'll reset that SIP trunk, but for now we're gonna move on to the Sangoma portion. So log into your Sangoma server and then go to modules, trunks, That'll bring up this window here. We want to add a new trunk, and we need that to be a Chan SIP trunk. So we'll do add SIP Chan SIP trunk and select it. Give our trunk a name. I'm going to use the name of my call manager, and then we're going to use uh, maximum channels. I'm going to select 23 here. You could do 10 or different number. That's up to you, depending on how many calls you think you're going to have going in between the two concurrently. We're going to do 23 today for the purposes of this video. Leave the rest of the settings alone and go to SIP settings. <coughs> Excuse me. In SIP settings, we'll have to give the, trunk, the outgoing trunk name a name. And I'm going to use ITSCUCM. And then we need to fill in the peer details. These are the details that I have found that work. Um, I'm sure you could tweak some of these and still make it work, but I know for a fact that what I'm about to put here works for this, this configuration. We're going to do context from internal host is going to be the IP address of our call manager. Type Apologize, I'm having a hard time hitting the equal sign there. It's going to be friend, qualify, it's going to be yes, DTMF mode, it's going to be RFC 2833, disallow, all, allow, ULAW, and ALAW. NAT is going to be no. Insecure is going to be very. Now the insecure very is unique to the outgoing trunk. You will not see that on the incoming trunk name that we'll do in just a second. And then we'll select the port. 
five guys of 50 60. now i know that on the trunk on the call manager side we selected 51 60 and now we're going to be selected 50 60. <clears throat> that is because call manager is listening for these sip, SIP messages on port 5060. If we try to send the call to call manager using 5160, then call manager is going to ignore those messages as they come in and our call will not build. So we're going to use 5060 on the Sangoma portion sending calls to the call manager. Now we'll select incoming and give this one a name. I like to use the same name as the outgoing, but add an N dash I N to the end of it so we know it's the incoming. And then use these peer settings. Again, these are ones that I know work, but I'm sure that they could be tweaked to be done a different way. The type is going to be friend. The context is going to be from trunk. The host is again going to be the IP address of the call manager. The DTMF mode is going to be RFC 2833. Disallow. <clears throat> Sorry. All allow you law and a law. Nat. It's going to be no. Can re-invite is no. Now that again is a setting that is unique to the incoming dial peer, uh, uh, incoming trunk, and not the outgoing. So can re-invite is no, and then qualify is yes. Now you could put a port number here. I'm um, going to leave it at the the default. Um, it should be using. 50, 60 for this. So we're just going to leave this alone and not make any change here. And now your trunk is built. And we're going to click Submit. Click OK. There was our trunk. Now we need a outbound route on Sangoma to send calls from Sangoma to the extensions that are on Call Manager. We'll do that here. Click Add Outbound Route. And we'll give our route a name. Again, I'm going to use the name of our call manager, since that's where we're sending the calls to. The other options here you could select. We're going to leave them normal, except for trunk sequence match, trunk sequence for matched routes. And we're going to send it to the trunk we just created. And then we're going to select a dial pattern. For this one, I'm going to use 5XXX. Now that will include my 5016, that is my extension on my CIPC. And then we'll click Submit. Again, this functions like Route Patterns in Call Manager. I'm not sure it can do everything as far as wildcards that Call Manager can. You have to look that up, but you can use some wildcards to send those calls to your Call Manager. There's one more thing you'll need to check. Um, by default, if you have your extension that you're calling from in a class of service, you'll need to make sure that that class of service now has access to the route pattern, the outbound route that you just built. Because if I'm not mistaken, it will put it in the disallow section. And if it's in disallow, then your calls will not work. And see, we have it here. ITSCUCM deny. That's not going to work for us. We're going to move it over to allow. Click Submit, and then Apply Config. Now the Apply Config is going to take a minute and a half, two minutes, something like that. So while that's doing that, we'll go back to our Call Manager, go to Device, go to Trunk, select our SIP trunk for our Sangoma, and Reset. Do a Reset, do a Reset, Close. Um, that is because when you create a new SIP trunk in Call Manager, you have to do a reset on it after you've built it, or it will not work. <laughs> and your day will be long, and your day will be frustrating. And there we go, it's back up. Now we'll go back to PBX. It's done. Now there's a way to check your SIP trunk in 
PBX to see if it's connected to call manager. Unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do in call manager to verify it just by looking at the interface. But in Sangoma, you can by going to modules and then asterisk info and then clicking Chansip info and then scrolling down till you see the name of your <clears throat> excuse me hmm. until you see the name of your your trunk. It looks like one of mine is not fully correct because I only see my outgoing and not my income. So let's make sure I typed everything right. This happens every time I try to do a video. We'll go to our trunk and we'll select it. I should have seen two in that window and not one. So we're going to make sure I typed everything right here. And, oh, and see, I made a mistake. Brand. Submit. This should hopefully fix that issue there. We'll have to apply config again. And uh, just for good measure, we'll reset this, this trunk on this side, just in case. It shouldn't matter, but always nice to do it. Um, you know, when you click the buttons correctly. Reset. Reset. Close. Find. There it goes down. And there it goes up. And while we wait again, we'll, I'll go ahead and create this other route pattern for myself. The easiest way to do that is to select the one you created earlier, click copy, and change your route pattern. So do one XX. So some extensions I have on my Saint Goma there. I'll click close. There we go. I'm gonna go back to PBX. It's updated. Go to asterisk info. Chance up info. And now I should see both at the bottom. And I do. See, small mistype can create your trunk and not show up. You should see two here. You should see your, in, your incoming and your outgoing trunk from your tr the trunk that you built. And we do. And they're both okay. And they're both using port 5060. So now we should be able to make a call. <laughs> Let's test that now. We'll go 5016. That's our CIPC extension. And click call. And there you see the call is occurring. Hang up. And now we'll call from CIPC to Sangoma. There's the call built. We answer. And there you go. And that is how you build a SIP trunk between Sangoma and CUCM to send calls between the two. If you have any questions on how to do anything else with route patterns, please leave that in the comments below and thank you for your time.